Hi everyone, my name is Joanne Kennedy and I'm a naturopath in Sydney, Australia and I specialise in methylation and histamine intolerance. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my knowledge around low homocysteine. So this is a really important topic and one of my favourite things to look at with my patients because people with low homocysteine are often feeling very, very unwell. So I'm going to share with you the Pathway Planner. This is the Pathway Planner from Seeking Health Educational Institute. And here we have homocysteine here. So if your homocysteine is tested low, so below seven, particularly if it's sort of below five, you know, three, three and a half, four, five, you can be feeling very, very unwell from low homocysteine. So one of the first things we need to know about homocysteine, it's made in the body and it's made from methionine. So methionine is an essential amino acid. It means we need to be consuming it in our diet. Okay, it's also a sulfur containing amino acid. So if you're not eating enough methionine, you're going to be, potentially you're going to be low in homocysteine. Also, if you're not eating enough sulfur, the body is going to use sulfur, uh, sorry, homocysteine, which is a storage molecule for sulfur, which is going to be broken down into cysteine to provide the, um, the cysteine that the body needs to make glutathione and taurine and sulfate, okay? So these are all sulfur-based amino acids and molecules, okay? So what we need to understand is that glutathione is extremely important. We, we can't, without glutathione, we can't actually live. It is the body's major antioxidant and it sequesters all the free radicals that occur with inflammation. Okay, so if you have chronic inflammation due to chronic gut issues such as SIBO or oxalates, you might have mold toxicity, heavy metal toxicity, or inflammatory conditions like endometriosis will also really increase your need for glutathione. Okay, so to make glutathione, your body will convert homocysteine into cysteine down this pathway. Now, to do this, it uses two enzymes, the CBS enzyme and the CTH enzyme, and both of these enzymes are vitamin B6 uh, dependent. Okay, so if your requirement for glutathione is high and this pathway is running fast, right, to, for homocysteine to convert into cysteine using all this B6, you can become deficient in B6. And without B6, you have issues clearing pyrroles from the spleen, and you also have issues clearing glyoxalate from the liver. And if glyoxalate builds up in the liver, it increases oxalate production, okay? And oxalates then go on to create a lot of inflammation in the body. They're sharp crystals. They deposit in the joints, in the gut, in the bladder, the vagina, the urethra, the lungs, the thyroid, the brain, they get everywhere, okay? So they cause a lot of inflammation in the body and they'll cause a lot of histamine release as well, okay? And then because of all that inflammation, your need for glutathione goes up and up and up and what will happen is your homocysteine will drop even further, okay? This is often in the case with we see tests in people's homocysteines as low as three, Okay, then what happens to make matters even worse is that oxalates get into the kidneys and sulfate and oxalate are bidirectionally exchanged across the membrane. So when oxalates are high, what happens is you move sulfate out of the kidneys. Here's sulfate here and it gets excreted in the urine. So you start reducing your sulfate. Okay, so... Sulfate is so important for our body. It's essential for detoxification of hormones like DHEA and estrogen. It helps detoxify neurotransmitters such as serotonin and dopamine. It makes mucin, which is a mucus lining in the gut that expels pathogens. Okay, it breaks down bile. It's involved in drug metabolism. It's very, very important. Okay, so what can happen is if you're really deficient in, in, um, in sulfur, then you are unable to make sulfate, which is important for sulfation, okay? So sulfate is so important to our body that what can actually happen is that gut bacteria 
can start synthesizing sulfur, which then gets converted, converted into sulfate. It's incredible really that the gut microbiome can do that. But what can happen is you're building up all this sulfur and you're not able to use utilize it. Okay, so if you've got gut, a lot of bacteria um, releasing sulfur and this pathway is running fast, okay, and you've got oxalate issues, you've got massive issues with the utilization of sulfur. It's like you have too much, but you can't use it. And when you have too much sulfur, you can feel quite unwell. You can have a lot of belching, nausea, flatulence, a lot of diarrhea. You can also have joint pain, body pain, bladder pain. Um, you won't be able to tolerate sulfur foods, okay? So eggs are sulfur, red meat is sulfur, all your brassica vegetables are sulfur, onion and garlic are sulfur. So people often feel quite unwell um, from, from if they consume these sulfur-rich foods, okay? So when homocysteine is low, it basically means this pathway is running fast. So what do we do about it? We need to identify why, Okay, we need to look at gut issues. Do you have large bowel dysbiosis? Do you have SIBO? Do you have a prop do you have oxalates? Okay, so organic acids testing is good for looking at oxalates, but the signs and symptoms of oxalates are the pain symptoms, gut pain, bladder pain, vaginal pain, urethra pain. Um, they, it, it does impact the thyroid. Okay, so you can look at these symptoms of oxalate okay so, sometimes you know it can be tricky because sometimes don't people don't present with issues of high oxalate um, but they have issues uh, multiple food intolerances okay so they they can't tolerate oxalate foods which are um, sweet potato potato spinach nuts and seeds are also high in oxalate they'll have massive histamine issues because oxalates drive inflammation and cause Histamine issues, so they're intolerant to histamine foods. Okay, so tomato, avocado, spinach, as well as histamine and oxalate. Um, and also, what can happen is you can become uh, intolerant to salicylates as well because um, you need sulfation to break down salicylates. Okay, so people will present with multiple food intolerances that are often driven by oxalate as the baseline driver, okay? So oxalates will dump sulfur in the urine. Without sulfur, you can't, uh, the sulfation process doesn't work properly. Sulfation breaks down salicylate, so you become intolerant to salicylates. And at the same time, oxalates drive a lot of inflammation, which will cause a lot of histamine release. So you're also intolerant to histamine. So people with multiple food intolerances, a really good place to start is to actually look what's going on with homocysteine. Okay, so I hope that's given you some information about um, low homocysteine. If you've been tested low homocysteine and you're told it's not a big deal, that's not correct. It is a big deal. You need to, um, we, we need to be, you need to work with a practitioner who can actually help you understand your why you have low homocysteine and look at all the ways that they can help you bring your homocysteine or fix this pathway and bring the homocysteine back up.